Hello, my name is Dante Rene, and welcome to the 10 Room Bizarro YouTube page, where I talk about films that I believe need to be talked about more. Tonight's film is 1982's The Beach Girls. This is 1982's The Beach Girls. This is a special limited edition Blu-ray put out by Scorpion Releasing. You can get it on the Code Red site. Also, you can get it, I believe, on Screen Archives, possibly, and Amazon and eBay. But it is now out of print, so it's going to be in the 30 40 price range now. This is an unbelievable beautiful blu-ray transfer of this film that was really only previously available on some kind of shoddy dvd releases that were legitimate kind of grouped releases um, but uh, this is actually an hd transfer from the original camera negatives so this was really really awesome i was able to get this when it was still in print um, and the tagline on the front right here says look who just invaded uncle carl's beach house that's uncle carl there with his niece and his niece's friend i want to tell you that the first time i saw this film was actually a rental when I was a teenager in the 80s and this is a movie in the back of my mind that I've been trying to find for so long you know how you you slowly try to find all the films that you might have rented or watched when you were younger and this was one in the back of my head I knew there was a movie out there that involved large trash bags of marijuana I just couldn't find it I knew it was like a, a sex comedy and uh, last year I was watching it on DVD and I, and I couldn't believe it. This was the movie. But I also fell in love with the movie as an adult and had this kind of profound experience watching this movie and immediately went online and purchased this off of Amazon. Uh, so I got this Blu-ray right from there. So there's a little bit of the backstory right there for you. This particular film um, has, you can notice her right here on the front. I believe her name is Deborah Blee. Okay, right there. She was also in Malibu Bikini Shop, which I also reviewed on this YouTube page. Uh, she plays a, a much different character, kind of a fiancé who's very rich and, and, and kind of snobby and bitchy in Malibu Bikini Shop. But in this film, um, she plays uh, the niece um, who's actually very conservative and uh, kind of trying to... You know, just kind of try to keep everything okay. She has she's staying at her uncle Carl's beach house for the summer, and she's just trying to make sure that uh, everything is cool. She's got her two friends staying with her, and that's when the craziness begins. And this includes delivery boys. This includes delivery girls. Uh, this includes pirates. This includes gay sailors. This includes. Um, old, uh, perverted neighbors. This includes a perverted, um, caretaker. This includes a martial artist limo driver. Uh, this includes a, um, uh, two people that are engaged. Um, and, uh, uh, this includes a guy who's, uh, playing, who wears a cop uniform who's not a cop yet. This includes a guy who muff dives. Uh, this includes um, just so many interesting, wild characters in this particular film. So let's get into the movie a little bit. First and foremost, the soundtrack to this film. The soundtrack to this film is done by a band by the name of Arsenal. If you know anything about these types of teen sex comedy films, you know that the majority of these soundtracks are done by typically one band for the movie and that that music has never been released um, and it's not stuff you hear on the radio they didn't have the, I guess the money for that so it's all music that was specifically made for the particular film and in this particular case that's what happened you have a band called Arsenal and yes I just purchased the vinyl soundtrack of the Beach Girls. It exists. If you go on eBay, if you go on Discogs.com, you can find it for a pretty reasonable price, about the $20 range. There is a vinyl soundtrack that I just discovered for this film. I had no idea. So all the music in this film is just awesome. Um, awesome 80s summer California beach sounding music and remember this is 1982 so you're getting the crossover from the, the 70s disco also so you even have some songs that have kind of disco vibes to them but the majority you're getting summer beach rock and roll types of vibes that are just the songs are so catchy and um, they're written for the film 
And when we go to the style of, and we even have, by the way, we even have um, some uh, live guitar playing in the film as well, um, with some pretty hilarious songs that are being sung at a party. And I got to tell you that the architecture of this film is phenomenal. This is a real house. This looks like a real house on the beach in California. Um, it supposedly takes place at Paradise Beach in California. And this is the, the, the kind of architecture where really the, almost the entire film takes place in this one house and the, the, the kind of the surroundings around the house and the beach around the house. And this is an example of a film that's really showing you that they're filming it in the actual location because you're looking at the house from the outside and then you're in on the inside of the house looking out in the same direction. So you're really getting a sense that this is... This is the real deal. They're filming actually in this house and around this house on this location. This is a phenomenal house. I mean, this would be anybody's ideal dream beach house. I said that the beach house in Malibu Bikini Shop was awesome. This beach house might even be my favorite one. Huge glass windows overlooking the beach. It's up on like kind of a kind of on a cliff kind of over the beach. Um sunken living room you got a sauna you got a fire pit uh tons of deck space an awesome pool uh just glass windows everywhere uh built-in tape deck stereo system in the stone wall you gotta check that out so it's just a really fabulous location here um where the majority of the film takes place really 99 percent of the film takes place here a couple shots on the on, in the ocean and stuff like that but the whole film really takes place here on the beach around it um so on Unbelievable, very, very wealthy architecture, but just a, an awesome, wealthy beach house uh, type of vibe. The style of this of this film, you know, this is a really, if you know the teen sex comedy genre, you know, teen exploitation, exploitation, you know that it can really just, they can do whatever the hell they want. I mean, these this genre can really just go crazy. It can really bleed into kind of like the bizarre you know, uh, bizarre uh, underground uh, filming in a way because uh, the teen sex comedy genre or the teen exploitation genre can really kind of, they really kind of can do whatever the hell they want. They could even put horror in there or anything. They can just go crazy. And if you know, the majority, you know, the, the teen sex comedy really did meld with horror. I mean, and one of the biggest examples of that is the Friday the 13th series. Um, but this particular film, of course, you're going to have, I mean, this is just the, if you want to live vicariously through the freedom of school being out and being young again and the freedom of not caring about your future, not thinking about what you're going to do next, but just kind of um, floating along on your impulses and partying, this film has massive parties. Um, so you're getting that party vibe. There's the, the most marijuana I've ever seen in a film before. Yes, I'm, I'm being honest. Wait till you see. Trash bags of it. Um, and uh, there is just wild parties, wild dancing at the parties, wild characters at the parties, tons of sexual double entendres and even uh, physically speaking double entendres in a way. Um, we also have a lot of slapstick humor in this film, which is not something you would typically see per se in a teen sex comedy. At least, you know, not a ton. I don't. I, don't. I mean, almost like Naked Gun a little bit, some of the slapstick in here. So you're going to see some of that as well. Um, it's like, like overly slapsticky corn any type of situations that kind of cut in throughout the film um like food fight you'll see what i mean um and you also have drama um kind of some suspense with some pirates and some illegal activity and things like that not too serious but it's like kind of kind of interesting of course you have romance in here um with uh with the main with the main character right here which kind of deals with the storyline and things like that and then you just again you have the older people looking like they're just pff, their lives suck and then um the younger people just you know are totally living it up and actually in this particular film all relationships all all um relationships that were once there at the beginning of the film are now broken by free love by the end of the film and everybody's happy <clears throat> um and people who were fighting 
you know, in the halfway mark of the film are now at peace with each other because I don't want to give away too much. Uh, we even have some martial arts fighting in this film as well, which is really, really bizarre. We have some racial slurs. Um, there, you know, just some bizarre stuff. We have a, we have a mud fight, um, lots of side party characters, uh, lots of stuff going on at the parties, uh, right when you think that the, the first party was crazy, then you get to the second party and stuff is just going down. In this particular film, um, from the sexuality standpoint, of course, this is an R-rated movie, um, this film in particular has a lot, uh, of nudity. You have a lot of... Uh, full camera on topless nudity that stays on the woman's breasts for a long time. It's not like these quick cuts and some teen sex comedies. You also have full frontal and you also have uh, lots of butts. I mean, there is one scene in the film that is just this amazing collage of ass running into the water. Um, and you're even getting a, a lot of male nudity as well, butts and some distant penis shots. So th for, for teen sex comedies, you know, the Beach Girls definitely... Uh, has a high quota of nudity. Um, are there any sex scenes? No, not really. I mean, there's a couple people making out, and, and there's a lot of there are a lot of words about sex, like muff diving and things like that. But no, there's no sex in the in the movie. All of the nudity is running around, jumping in a pool, um, laying out, stuff like that. All the nudity is great. Uh, this is another thing. The cast is very attractive. The main girls in the film, Ginger Ducky, very attractive. Um, and uh, there's even a lead guy character who plays guitar that some ladies might like him if you like the California, uh, you know, 80s look. Um, so, every, you know, everybody, everybody's just awesome in this film. And um, the, the thing that I find really interesting is that I don't even think there was one curse word in the film. Um, so you can see how films can sometimes have been different in the early 80s, even with a film with tons of nudity. You know, so it's really interesting. Amazing pool sequences in this movie. Um, you're going to see, like, all naked chicken fighting. Um, there's just a carefree, wild party vibe about this film that you completely forget how old you are and you are living vicariously through this film. There is a lot of power in this film. I don't know how to really describe it, at least to me. Um, this is definitely one of those teen sex comedies that you pop this on, you know, late at night and you are getting that late at night cable TV vibe. Um, and it's sexy, it's erotic, it's fun, it's awesome. Um, and, you know, you're, you're even having, you know, some situations in here with older guys and younger girls and older women and younger guys. I mean, this is a crazy movie. Um, and uh, it just has a lot of power in it to suck you in to living by impulse and to really when you pop this movie in it's like a 97 minute party to me you get a wild uh you know kind of um montage on the beach with four wheelers and with some disco music playing and um just a wild ending to the film as well beautiful if you're watching it on a hd television you know just a beautiful ending the movie looks unbelievable and it sounds unbelievable this is 1982's the beach girls put out by scorpion releasing it's a code red and on this particular release there's a special intro uh by this lady right there also um if you're friends with me on facebook you'll see that i'll put up a lot of actors and actresses um from these films and just kind of showcase them uh the one girl who plays ginger in the film this is the only film she has done um that's her right there if you can see her and she's not on the cover but uh, she's kind of a a wall uh, she did this movie and i don't know where she is uh from from there so very interesting she's like actually one of my favorites in the film so here it is 1982 the beach girls love this movie i finally found it from my childhood thank you so much for watching the 10 room bizarro youtube page where i talk about films that i believe need to be talked about more and this is definitely one of them thank you please feel free to check out all my other reviews on this page if you please feel free to check out my own personal movies at youtube.com slash poopy diarrhea thank you and good night